In this video, you're going to learn how to solve triangles using the law of sines and the law of cosines. So when do you use the law of sines and law of cosines? Well, it's when you don't have a right triangle. And we're going to be using these formulas right here. I'm going to go through two examples with you. The first one's just going to use the law of sines. The second one's we're going to have to use both the law of sines and the law of cosines. So you're going to want to see that both of these examples. The first thing though you want to notice though is that you see how they have this angle 97 degrees in the side across from it, eight. And here we have 40 degrees but we don't know the side across from it. So how are we going to find this missing side? Well, that's where the law of sines comes in. You can use either this top one or this bottom one. They're just reciprocals of one another. So let's go ahead and set this up. We've got the sine of 40 degrees over its side opposite. I'm going to call that side A because it's across from angle A. And that equals the ratio of the sine of 97 degrees over its side opposite, which is 8. So now all we have to do is cross multiply on the diagonals. That's going to give us 8 times the sine of 40 degrees equals A times the sine of 97 degrees. To get A by itself, we just have to do the opposite of multiplying by 97, divide by the sine of 97. And let's see what that comes out on our calculators. Now you might want to make sure you check your mode and uh, make sure you're in degrees. So 8 sine 40 divided by sine of 97. And that's coming out to about 5.2. I'm just going to round. So A equals 5.2. Now, when we talk about solving triangles, what that means is we want to find all the angles and all the sides. So there's actually six pieces of information here. Let's solve for this angle C here next. We have these two angles. We can add them up and subtract from 180 to find the third. So 40 plus 97 is 137. And if we subtract that from 180, we get 43 degrees. Okay, just one side left to solve for. That's the side across from angle C. Okay, which is side C. So you can see we have another pair. And let's make another proportion. We have sine of 43 degrees over its side opposite C equals sine of 97 degrees over its side opposite, which is 8. Now you might be saying, Mario, uh, how come you didn't use uh, 40 and 5.2? And the reason that I do that is because 5.2, we actually rounded that uh, answer. And so if we round again on this next step, we might be a little bit off. So I tend to try to go ahead and use the original numbers if at all possible. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to get uh, C by itself. And so again, I'm going to cross multiply across that equal sign. So we have C times the sine of 97 degrees equals 8 times the sine of 43 degrees. And then divide both sides by sine of 97 degrees to get C by itself. And uh, check my calculator work on this, we've got 8 sine of 43 uh, divided by the sine of 97. Okay, so I'm getting 5.5 for side C, and you solve the triangle. You found all the angles, all the sides. Okay, example number two, we've got this side, this side, and the angle in between. Now, I want to point out something very important to you. If you try to do the law of sines, like sine of 120 degrees over side B, and then you try to do like the sine of angle A over like 9, you're going to have two unknowns, two variables, and you're not going to be able to solve that equation. So we're not going to be able to use the law of sines on this problem. Whenever they give you side, 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 like three sides and nothing else, or side, angle, side, meaning the angle in between the two sides, that's when you're going to have to start off by using the law of cosines, and that's these three formulas right here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use this middle formula here because I'm trying to solve for the side across from angle B, and I know the two sides that make up angle B. So we're going to use this middle one. I'm just going to rewrite it real quickly here. We've got B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine angle B. Okay, so now let's go ahead and substitute in what we know. So we don't know what side B is here. So let's just leave that as B squared. A is the side across from angle A, so that's going to be 9 squared. C is the one across from angle C, that's 7 squared minus 2 times 9 times 7 times the cosine of angle B, which is 120 degrees. Now to solve for B, see how this is B squared? We can take the square root of both sides, and that'll be what B is. Now check my work on this. Uh, we're going to do this all, I'm going to do it all in one step on the calculator. So we're going to take the square root of the quantity 9 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 9 times 7 times the cosine of 120. And again, make sure you're in degrees. I'm getting about 13.9 for side B here. So let's go ahead and put that in. So now what we're going to do is we can switch gears. We can go over to the law of sines because you can see we've got a pair now. We've got 120 and 13.9. 
and we're going to solve for angle A in side 9. We could do uh, angle C first uh, as well, but let's just do angle A. So we've got sine of angle A over its side opposite, which is 9, equals the sine of 120 degrees over its side opposite, which is 13.9. Now here what I'm going to do, I'm going to get sine of A by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 to get sine of A by itself. Then what we're going to have to do is whenever you solve for the missing angle, you're going to have to do the sine inverse okay, of both sides. So I'm going to figure out what this is. I'm going to take the sine inverse of it, or you can do it all in one step. I tend to do it in uh, two steps. So we've got 9 times the sine of 120 divided by 13.9, and then I'm going to do the sine inverse of that previous answer. So I try to take that whole long decimal so I get a little bit more accuracy. I'm getting about 34.1 for angle A, which is right here, 34.1 degrees. Now you can see we've got two of the angles. To find the third angle, all we have to do is subtract from 180 degrees. Let's see, we get 154.1. So what's 180 minus 154.1? 25.9. And that's it. So now you solve the triangle. You found all the angles, all the sides, and you got it. If you want to see what happens when you have like the potential for getting two triangles or one triangle or even no triangle, follow me over to that video right there where I talk about that important concept of the ambiguous case or the side-side angle condition.